What's going on everybody? It is your man Cleveland Terry and today we're going to be talking about this guy right here. This guy. This is a external hard drive. Today we're going to talk about why you should have one, why it's important to have one, and some of the benefits you can get by having one of these. Let's talk about it. All right, so we all know that having a backup for your computer is kind of an important thing because one little misstep, one little forget, one little slip, and your entire computer can be dead. And all of those files, all that history, all of those memories, all of that research and time, gone at the blink of an eye. So we wanna make sure that we do have a backup for our computers, especially for our DJ computers. Now, DJ computers, need to be backed up because just like your record collection that you might have spent years building, in the event of a fire, all of those records are damaged and gone and a lot of them you may not be able to get back. Well, the same thing applies to your digital files. A lot of music that you might have sometimes is no longer available to purchase or the version that you have, you may not be able to get again. So having those backups are very, very important. The problem comes when people try to figure out what backup works for them. What's the easiest solution? What makes the most sense? There's a lot of options out there and I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about every option. I'm gonna talk about kind of at a top level and then I'm gonna break down what I think are probably the most important things and some options if, you know, you got money to burn. The reason why I made this video was because it actually happened to me over the weekend, not in the way that you think. I didn't have a Mac crash, but what happened was some of you might've seen it on Twitch when I was DJing with my son and my son's MacBook Air, which was extremely old, died on him. We were having tons of problems. So we were getting down to like the zero hour. There was like 15 minutes left to go. I couldn't get that thing to work. I really wanted to have this show. Couldn't do it because, well, we didn't have it, except I did have a solution because I had a backup of my drive, my Catalina computer on a backup, which is a bootable backup. So I just took this drive, plugged it into another computer and then just booted it up from the drive and we were good to go. A little slower than usual, but we were still good to go. Now, I couldn't have done that if I didn't have a backup. If I didn't have this bootable version of this hard drive. And I say bootable because there's a lot of different options out there, which we're gonna talk about now. So at the, I guess the root level, and we're talking about Macs right now, okay? But the same idea is going to apply for a PC. So I don't want you to think it's a Mac versus PC thing. The same things apply across the board. I'm only talking Mac because that is what I use. At the root level of all of this stuff, you have your built-in backup devices. So with the Mac, any Mac that you buy has a application called Time Machine built in to the computer. So all you have to do is plug in any hard drive and then Time Machine will pop up and say, do you want to use this as a backup? And it doesn't matter the size, the space, it'll just start backing up files. It's a very, very simplistic thing. It's going to back up all of your files. It even backs up like your root files for your application. So you can get everything from your Mac onto that drive. The problem with that is it's only a storage device. So you can't use it as a bootable backup. So it's great in a pinch to be able to say, oh, I, you know, I got a new computer and I need to import all my files over to it. That works perfectly using Time Machine. But in the event that I described, it won't work for that. Now you can pull like your iTunes folder over, you can import that in there, but it's a longer process. You're essentially copying those files over. So that's gonna be a whole different animal. So that's your first choice, which is the time machine. And then you run into your cloud service backups like Carbonite and Backblaze, which will give you a full backup of your system. And more importantly, it will back it up offsite. And why is that important? Well, in the event that your house burns down or somebody steals your drive or somebody steals your bag with your drive and your backup and it's, uh, you, those files are gone. You can't get those back. So if you can put those up in the cloud, well, you will always have access to those files. Cloud service is very, very good. If you can do the cloud service, 
A lot of them require you to pay a fee. Nothing's free out there. And for some of us with our larger music folders, you're gonna need something that's gonna be bigger. So you have the options of the Dropbox. If you just wanna do a simple one-to-one -one clone over of your music folder, just move it over, get yourself one of the larger tiers, which is like, I think you can get a terabyte now with Dropbox for like $10 a month. So for $10 a month, you have the peace of mind knowing that your computer and all its files are backed up off-site. So in the event that something happens to your computer, to your house, to whatever, those files are going to be somewhere that you can get to. So if you can afford it, I definitely say uh, go with that route because the only other option is going to be is to have multiple hard drives and you clone them all one to one each time and then put them in different locations. You know, maybe one at your office, one at the house, one in your car, one at grandma's house. And then that way, in case something goes wrong, you always have backups. As I was doing research before I turned on this camera, I found a couple of, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have to give that a try. At least maybe I up my Dropbox and it's not just Dropbox, it's iCloud, it's Google Drive, it's uh, Microsoft's version, which I believe is OneDrive. So all of those options are going to allow you to at least back up the crucial parts of your computer. But in the event that you're at a venue, you can't download your entire computer in the time it takes to get going. Now, obviously companies like Rekordbox have been building these options in with the understanding that that's probably where we're moving, but we are not there yet. Since we're not there yet, we gotta have a physical backup in our hands. In order to do that, we need a cloner. Bootable clones all have applications that run on your computer. And there are several out there. There's a uh, carbon copy, there's a uh, super duper, and a few others. I'm only gonna talk about the ones that I've used and that I know. One of my favorites, which I have been using for multiple years, is super duper. Now I've been using this thing for years and it's never let me down. It's a great program, it's cheap. Um, how does free sound? Does free sound pretty good? Cause it sounds good to me. Yeah! Basically this app lives on your Mac and then once you are ready to do a full one-to-one -one clone, all you need to do is plug in your hard drive and I would recommend at a minimum getting a hard drive the exact same size as your computer. Obviously you're doing a one-to-one -one clone, you wanna make sure you have space. Now, for instance, with this one, this is a four terabyte drive. My computer holds two terabytes. So what I've done is I partitioned this drive for two terabytes for my drive itself for my clone. And then the other two I leave for my media file. So if I'm doing video work or whatever, that's what the other two terabytes are for. With something like SuperDuper, once you plug it in, the free version will allow you to just do a one-to-one -one backup. So you turn it on, you say, uh, I wanna take my Mac drive and I wanna copy it over to my external Mac drive. It, that's all, it takes a few hours, copies it all over, depending on the size of your hard drive, and that is it. It sets itself up to become a bootable copy and uh, you can even have it once it shuts down to shut down your computer and then load the bootable copy. That way you know that it works properly. Once you boot it up from the drive, which can take a while, I'm gonna be honest with you, depending on the speed, of the computer. Once you boot the drive, once you're logged in and you open up Serato, the speed is, the speed decrease is nominal. I mean, you can feel it a little bit, but it's never something that's gonna, that's gonna slow you down to where you're like, oh my God, this really sucks. You can still operate it. This is a backup. It's designed for emergencies. So you shouldn't really care that it's a little slower because you're still DJing. As far as Super Duper is concerned, there are upgrades. So I actually have the paid version. The paid version's about 28 bucks. The important thing about the page version is it allows for smart updates. So once you've done your full clone, the next time you plug it in, uh, SuperDuper will only look for files that have changed. So if something hasn't changed, uh, it's gonna leave it alone. So that completely speeds up the process. You're talking about maybe something that took you six, seven hours before, takes you 30 minutes on the next go because it's only updating the files that you have changed. So that smart update is really, really cool. With the free version, it's a one-to-one -one clone. It's gonna take your hard drive and then copy it to your external drive. And that's it, there are no other options there. So the reason why you wanna have a bootable clone is because in the event that your computer crashes and you need to go to a different computer, 
having a bootable clone is going to allow you to do so. You can use anybody's computer. Anybody that has a Mac, you can just plug it in. Maybe your Mac crashed and you go out and buy a Mac real quick. You can plug it in and boot up and it will run. Remember that, bootable drive. I don't care how much you've backed up in the cloud because in the event that you are at a venue, you are at the club and you load up and something's wrong and your computer is not working, the only option is to boot up from an external drive. Now it feels like I shouldn't have to really talk about this. Like this is something that everybody should really be doing and I shouldn't have to make a video about this, but I can't tell you how many times I've seen people tell me their computer's dead, how can I get my files back? Is there any way I can get my files back? Yeah, there is a way. Back up. By the way, uh, because I know I'm talking about this on a Mac, but if you have a solution in, on the PC side, leave it in the comments below. Leave it in the comments. Let's just get everybody up to speed, get everybody going, uh, because I don't know about the bootable process on a PC, but I do know that the bootable process is available. All right, guys, if you found what I said here useful, hit that like button. If you found what I said are really useful, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on the Instagram and the Twitters. Guys, always a pleasure. Probably talk to you later. We'll talk soon. Peace. Oh, by the way, you people that were talking about how dark it was and how I needed extra lights, it was not the lights. It was not the camera. It's a completely different system that I'm testing out to try to see if it will work. I'm having glitches with it, which is why my last couple of videos were dark. It had nothing to do with my light sources or anything else. This camera's the bomb. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> All right, guys. Talk to you later.